Customer Relationship Management, known as CRM, uh, was supposed to be a new paradigm, but it hasn't delivered on its investment. Stan, what went wrong? The initial investments didn't pay back the way companies expected. Uh, the second wave of investments probably paid back more. CRM has changed many, many times. And I, I think the, the problem in trying to manage customers is customers can manage themselves. And so the whole basis of it is we can manipulate the situation and get what we want out of customers is, is a difficult premise to start with. Um, I think a lot of the initial investments we're naive in the sense that if we build this software application that will enable us to manipulate the data, in fact, manipulate the customers, uh, they will behave as we hope they will behave. Uh, and really, the, when you're dealing with human beings, you're dealing with customers, mm -hmm. um, what you need to do is understand first what creates value to them, what they'll respond to, what will work better. Uh, and then, you know, react to that. So as opposed to, here's my proposition, buy it, please. Uh, the, the concept behind customer management is it's more of a listen and then to serve. Uh, and that talks about the very nature of these sort of investments. Uh, if you're writing a business case up front and you say, okay, we're going to invest all this money in new software, new business processes, new management structures, uh, and what we're going to get out of it is X and the discounted cash flows that flow out of it and all the rest. Okay, but you are assuming that even before you've invested in the data gathering, the analysis, the learning, the interacting with customers, you know how they will respond, you know what they want. So you're putting really, you know, the cart in front of the horse in, in, in some cases. Now, it's a difficult conversation to go to the finance director and say, listen, I want all this money. What are you going to get out of it? Well, I don't know. I haven't learned anything yet. <laughs> uh, and, and that's what we explored in, 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 in that article you, you referred to. Um, the nature of investment in this sort of way is, is that the return is contingent upon what you learn and how you react. So, and, and the IS scholarship, the IS community is better at understanding the sort of latent benefits of investment in these sort of systems. And perhaps marketing scholars and marketing practitioners could learn from, from that. Um, so you, you, you first have to engage at, uh, at, a, at a more affordable level with customers, build the data, build the competencies to understand, to analyze and react, then determine what it is that's going to work for you and then scale up. Uh, and so what we proposed was don't start with the big bang approach assuming that there's nothing to learn and then invest in a learning based system. Start much smaller, right? bottom up, learn and do, learn and do, learn and do. So investing in the resources is only one part of the equation. You've got to invest in the capabilities Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And in, in literature, in the academic literature, there's a, a, de a debate between which comes first. And the reality is, you know, the two sides of a coin and you've got to do them more or less in parallel. It's very difficult to develop new capabilities in the absence of any investment in potential resources. But just to go massively heavy in resource investment, ignoring and assuming the capabilities will be compliant, they'll develop because I got the software, now I'm going to be a good relationship marketer. No, you know, you need both. And I, th I think the challenge for management then, the challenge for, for top management, is how do you manage that? You know, we're, we're comfortable with the traditional discounted cash flow business case logic. I'm going to give you a big pot of money and here are the projections and it'll pay back eventually and I can see the curve over time. Here you're trying to manage people, processes, systems, and the flow of money to say, I'm going to give you some money now, learn with it, come back, what, tell me what you've learned, and I'll give you some more depending on how, how good it looks. It's more of a venture capitalist approach to investment than a traditional big bang upfront discounted cash flow analysis. Uh, and I think that approach to management w it will work better. It's more of a leadership role, uh, more of helping your, you know, the, the team involved on blocking problems in the organization. Um, but it's less, it's more messy, it's less neat. Right. There's not going to be one nice little PowerPoint. Here's my architecture, here's where CRM fits, here's the little box. You're going to have to let it grow and evolve. It will be more driven by your managers than the executives ultimately driven by your customers, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you as a top management team have to have that approach to encouraging 
the learning, the investment, the development of the team's competencies. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's a, and that's a, that's a challenge because I think, to be blunt, I think most top managers want the solution, mm -hmm. neat. Here's a difficult problem. Here's a very you know neat, understandable solution. I could crush the problem instantly. I'm afraid I don't think that will work in investments in customer management uh, and as we move forward to investments in social media. M the nature of customer type investments, customer marketing, uh, is this sort of contingent benefit approach based on the development of the right capability. Well, actually, that sort of leads me into the, the next piece um, where, as a result of the action research that you did, um, you came up with a framework um, to help marketers develop their organizations to develop, to develop their marketing capabilities. Can you talk a little bit about how that will help? Yeah, well, what, what we identified in, in, in the research is um, even to talk about marketing as a single entity is, is slightly simplistic and that the nature of good marketing practice, good marketing capability is, is slightly dependent on the type of relationship you have with customers. Is it very transactional? Is it very one-to-one -one relational? Or is it sort of networked? Uh, and it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. Even if we write them left to right on, on a slide, it doesn't mean the right-hand slide is better. It's, you, you need to understand very much the nature of the value you provide, the, not, the nature of the value you provide your customers, mm -hmm. and, and, and which of those is your dominant form of relationship. And for many companies over the last, let's say, 10 or 15 years, they have moved between being purely transactional to some sort of mixture of transaction with relationship. Some companies are purely relationship oriented and other companies still, especially today, are purely network oriented. Uh, and once you understand where you are on that relationship with your customers, the way you manage demand, the way you relate to customers, the way you build your brand, your value propositions, will change. Uh, and there's a lot of documentation about the change from being product customer led. And I think now we're starting to see in the literature change between being customer led to being network, community, social media led. Uh, and, and there's a continuum. I think one thing academics do agree on, in fact, most companies have a mixture of those relationships and capabilities. So we've got a framework that deconstructs those marketing capabilities a bit, and that just allows a bit greater visibility and allows senior managers to identify which capabilities they may be lacking. And as they go forward in an investment with CRM or social media, uh, they can say, okay, these, these are areas that we know we need to develop and to make sure in their planning for their investment, we have a, a, a somebody's going to be responsible for developing those capabilities and it's not going to be an afterthought. Right, so it's built into the whole it's built into decision. the plan, it's, it's yeah. part, it's identified, it's valued, yes. and it's not just about, okay, how many more incremental XYZs are we going to sell, how many hits are we going to get on the website. All those KPIs are helpful indicators of how well you're doing, but you still need to look at the development of the organization's competencies or capabilities uh, to make sure that you get value from these investments. So in, in summary, what are the key insights for the managers responsible for company CRM investment decisions? I, I think it, it, these are investments in learning where the benefits are contingent. I think they have to acknowledge that up front. You, therefore, you manage the, the investment, you manage your risk, and you manage the realization of benefits appropriately. This is not like putting a lot of money up front and then hoping and praying that you get your your return, uh, and you try to minimize that risk through a lot of a priori research and, 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 and testing. This is really development, learning from customers, mm. experimenting, learning, doing, moving, changing, building a team with the capabilities to enhance your relationships with customers. So it's, not, it's, it's less top down, it's more sort of management up. And I think that's the, the lesson for, for top managers. They're going to have to trust the people. They're going to have to be more like supportive venture capitalists than traditional financial analysts. Right. Uh, and, and all that, that entails in an organization, power and structures and, and rewards, et cetera. You've also got to give it time uh, because 
uh, how quickly you'll learn from your customers depends on the category you're in. So one of the companies in that study was a car company. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't buy cars every month <laughs> unless you earn a lot more than I do. <laughs> um, it takes time to learn from customers. The other one was an online betting company and there people who engage heavily in online betting do so several times a day. The learning cycles were very quick. Mm -hmm. And so those were two extremes of a phenomena. Uh, and so again, depending on your industry, depending how quickly and how much you learn from the customers, how much they'll engage. And so I think in, in most companies, you're just going to have to give it a bit of time and, and, and therefore be, think about that in your upfront business case and, and, and how, you, how you're going to manage that flow of money and resource to the project. Um, thanks, Dan, for your perspectives on customer relationship management.